But those changes have come through and some of the opportunities that, that we work with that. So these are my opinions, not those of Bethany, not even those of my head of department who may stand up shortly and totally contradict you. So I thought it was worthwhile perhaps reflecting a little bit on what your time of Bethany has been, where that might have gone, where you're heading to now, and what this strange and wonderful thing that's going on here actually means. For most of you, you're within a hair's breadth. Next week we have a board of endeavours. And hopefully we will smile sweetly on your endeavours and you'll be able to work up some results a week later and go, oh great, I made it. So you're almost there in terms of curtain and your curtain might be for you. Static a wonderful thing. I enjoy watching Big Bang Theory and they keep talking about physics and how physics is you know, the whole importance of the universe. Well, for the civil engineers, static works trust it. Electronics, sometimes. Computers, yeah, there always be the problems. So, it's always useful. My professor said to me, and he fought very strongly, over some statics because we had an underground laboratory. Someone's bright idea was to put you know, a materials a concrete testing laboratory in the basement. And it had to be all the concrete down there and all the rubbish out and all the rest of it. But it also had an underground stream going past. And he managed to prove very quickly that the best mechanical pumps in the world, the best electrical sensors in the world, failed. And we had four metres of water pressure squirting through the walls and doing wonders for our underground laboratory. He fought to have the laboratory designed to resist full water pressure. And if he hadn't, he would not have had a laboratory building at all. So trust the basics. If you've got they work, they're going to be useful time and time again. Some of those things you put off, yeah, out of that, are important you now. And something you seem to have forgotten in the first year, the second year, and the third year, and now being in fourth year, you're much more important in terms of where it goes. Understand that even though you think you're almost finished, you're just starting. All you've achieved today is the opportunity to have an easy ticket into the profession. And it's important to remember that that's where you're at. Someone had said, yeah, you've demonstrated enough capability that we might risk letting you out with some health plates on. And you might be able to manage to pick up the other necessary skills as you go forward. That ties in to then this idea that you're going to go on learning. This is not the end. You can't just sort of pack up all those books and then great, it stops. And even for people like me, I'm leaving the curtain but I hope it doesn't stop. It needs to keep going. There are opportunities and new things that go through. For that to be successful, you need to have confidence. I'm sort of a number of people who are sort of thinking, you know, I have fear and I feel quietly, no one will notice what's going on. You have, all of you have spent a lot of time and energy on the project, some a lot more than others, and some not even willing to sort of perhaps be proud of that time and energy that they've spent. Have confidence in what you do know and be smart enough not to believe that you know it all. The worst thing you can do whenever you start work next week, next year, is to go out on site and think, hey, I'm a university graduate, I can't do that, and you'll do what I tell you to do. Because you'll pretty quickly find out that you don't know it all. And that you're going to come proper big time with the people that actually have the experience that's necessary in terms of where that goes. I was really pleased when Nicholas sort of challenged us a bit about e learning and where it goes and said, hey, people now, face to face learning is still significant. I'm an old coacher and I believe in the old methods, I believe in apprenticeships. Mentoring and people actually working alongside others to 
can share knowledge. And so it's important when you're thinking about this time here. COVID is changing dramatically. The world is changing. We've got this magic of e-learning. We had someone at the beginning of the conference telling us that technology is one of the three girders of the learning experience. all of this fancy battery driven stuff that we see as essential to our livelihood. They manage. What's important for you to reflect on is the goodness, if you like, of the curtain experience. Some of them perhaps wasn't quite so good, some of them wasn't so successful. Yeah, that's all part of the learning experience too. But what I want to try and encourage you to think about the people and the relationships that you've made uh, for the last four or so years. What's going to matter to you in life is not how often you've got the latest technical wristbands or not. You don't have to fight to queue up to get iPhone 6 Plus just because it came out. <laughs> <laughs> what actually matters is people and the relationships you have with people. And that's kind of scary because I'm a guy that doesn't really easily relate to people. But I know the value of it. I know the value of the close friendships that I have. You need to value that. You need to value the people that are in the room at the moment that you wouldn't have met unless you were doing civil engineering. And you're probably going to keep making contacts with them. You need to value the David Scotts of this world. So when you bump into him in New Zealand, you can go, oh, you remember me. Yeah, it's kind of scary but nice to bump into people while you're doing the shopping. And suddenly go, oh, hang on a minute, how long ago was it? I've chatted to a couple of people and said, the really scary things are when you're teaching the children of the students that you had at Curtin in the past. It's not only it's true. It's the thing that you've been chatting to, the others you've met, it's the staff that matter. Because they're part of the curtain experience, they're part of what you're going to share. And I keep having students who are bumping into you know, people in the workplace and saying, oh, I'm going to check, I'm still there. You know, <laughs> couldn't be, right? I'm to the cast, now you've got to finish. So, value people. Above everything else, your civil engineering is about providing for the people. And if you value that, kick back whenever you can. Contribute both back to Curtin and to the community around it. Three big things there to try and make experience. Some of you may have noticed we had some industry people, one of them was an ex student from Curtin who came along and sat and listened to you and thought, gee, it's much nicer sitting there asking the questions than it is out here to try and answer them. Kid back. One of my students from a couple of years back told me, very clever student in business sense, he said, within two years, he said, I'll make a donation back to you to do the work with Kurt. Two months ago, the donation came. Through his word, there he was just over 18 months after he graduated, he made a significant cash donation to say thank you for work, what he had gained from being here. We love that. It's terrific. Right? And it's helpful for people so that you can do that. You can come and share your experiences with all the new students that are going to come through. And that happens too. Finding out what it's like three years, five years, ten years out is critical to the next generation of students. And you have a role to play in doing that. You need to realise that, as we said, you're just entering. You're just starting the learning curve. You should be expecting constantly to grow your skills You've been challenged about the projects and you think, oh yeah, I spent a bit of time on that. You need to realise you're going to have to go on 
learning, asking, working with people to get the knowledge that's going to take you forward. I used to have this on the bottom of my emails, and I guess the critical thing, particularly, and some of the changes that have been are positive in the sense that they are trying to get you more involved. But when we have smaller groups of students, um, and I guess a little bit more time, we used to get students much more involved in the labs. And one of the sad things for me is to see the loss of that practical, hands-on skills for working alongside. And to show a price for this, this is our Murray campus, and this gentleman standing back here is the head of department at Murray, and he's down there with a bunch of students. Um, it's the free stress concrete lean, the free stressing grid here and the floor behind. I can proudly say I've got my name on them. Um, I've got designed them and helped build them. I took Ashley from the technical staff here and he found out what it's like to try and work in a tropical country. He thought, yeah, this is all fine, I'm trying to do a little bit of welding, a little bit of concrete work, and so he went, wow, how bad is this? But we tried to share with, with Mary, and here we've got a bunch of students who now have first-hand experience of free stress concrete. They wouldn't have got it if they hadn't been at Curtin, they wouldn't have got it if we didn't have people committed to sharing those skills and those knowledge, knowledge with them. And they need to pass it along. They need to say, hey, where can we go? David Scott has his question, so what? I have my question, why? And some of my project students got really scared and they were even talking about, oh, what have you done with the, the next group? You know, you're still asking them why. And uh, I guess I've taken this to, to heart. Education has to be about constantly questioning why, so what, where's it going? What's it mean? It's never enough just to do something without knowing where it's going, how it's actually growing you as a person and you as a skill. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> For me, one of the sadness for the conference, and we had a lot of debate about do we run a conference or we do it just put you in front of you know, three people who just need questioning individuals and go through. Um, the conference is a special occasion, in my view. It allows you to present your project. One of the sad things was there were so few of you that took the time to sit and listen to what I was just learning. And share it with them. And it would be great if we could have 50 people in a room and it was meant that I don't, not only these people were scared, but all of you saying, oh, there's a big room I've got to talk to. Um, in many of the rooms, six to ten of you made the effort to come along. And I have to say with sadness that a lot of our staff, I know there's pressures on marking, also weren't there to share it. Whether the presentation was good or bad, whether the work was done well or not, it's the experience you gain from listening to someone else trying to tell you about their bit of engineering and what it meant for them. And it was the last opportunity that you're going to have to do that, the last opportunity to have people ask you questions about your project and about your thoughts without costing the real world, the boss, is going to get much more upset than David Scott or I ever do about the answers that are coming through. Because if they mean what in dollars, and they mean what potentially in killing people. And so there is a need for you to know your stuff and to be careful about the detail. And Kerry picked up a few where it's just so irritating to find you haven't checked the spelling of your title. You 
misspelled for others. You've got numbers that you have no belief in the accuracy. I've read one report where the percentage difference between the two things was calculated and put down as 9.387562%. And I know that's with Excel and too. And it was put down without thought. You need to take responsibility for what you are doing. Because your boss will certainly tell you about that a lot more clearly than that we have been. So it's a pity, in a sense, that you didn't engage a little more than you wanted to go. It was a pity that somebody said, ah, it doesn't really matter. You know, you're not going to fail anyway. The sad news is that we do. And there are subs in project. And some of you may be staring down the barrel of not graduating. A lot of you can go, oh, that's all over. And oh, isn't it terrific? But it was, a, it was the last opportunity that you had to express yourself as a student. And it was a challenge. It was different. It required you to be able to be persuasive about the data that was there. Okay. Then say a few special thank yous. Every year I sort of have a look down on the student and think, yeah, I know there's people or I think they're okay. Um, they're checklists. And they didn't volunteer, but we did. I had one student who came up and he said, I know you're good chair persons. I'll do it. Every other year it's gone, oh no, my name's on the list there. What does that actually mean? Maybe I've just suddenly volunteered you to be in the time slot. What's this chair person's role? We had a little chat last Friday about what we wanted to do with chair persons, and I actually said, you know, one thing I don't want them to do is to do this and sort of stand up and say, I have no questions, thank you. And only one did that exactly. But ah, that was the model he had asked me to do. The rest of you were really, you know, inexperienced chair persons who stepped up and it was great. And I think that those of you that were chair persons need to show your appreciation because they made the three day front, not me. So let's just show our appreciation for all those. <laughs> On your behalf, 
particularly on my behalf, the Department of Civil Engineering only runs because we've got Diane. Uh, I've said this every year and I mean it with great sincerity. The recent restructuring of Curtin University nearly meant they kind of said, oh, civil engineering doesn't need Diane. Yeah. Not can't see that that's a real role within the structure. Fortunately, I got sensible and Diane is here um, and still supporting us. I couldn't do my job without Diane's support. You couldn't get what you need done without Diane's support. Diane is absolutely linchpin for students and staff within the department, and I think it's very appropriate that you show your appreciation for her help, because Diane's the one who's going to get you over that graduation line, if nothing else, as we go through. So Diane, once again, thank you very much.
But in part of that, there are these words talking about civil engineering and the challenges that you're moving into. And often we get buried in the detail and we forget what is this wonderful thing of civil engineering and how it's evolved and how it's working. And it's useful to reflect. These are old statements, but very true still in terms of what we're trying to do. Directing the great sources of power in nature, not all entirely successfully, and we have to accept that we're not going to manage to control all of them, but we're going to certainly look for the use and convenience for the community that we're working in. Okay, looking forward a little bit more. If you want, yeah, a key thing underneath here was Kirkland's vision, and we now have seven or five, I, I lost count, but they got their key words to go with. The three P's is what I want you to really consider. Pride, passion. And we talked to a few students who got out in front of here and read and went, where's the passion gone? When I talked to them down in the lab, Daniel was excited about his new idea. He got here and he killed all the excitement from these people. I thought, geez, this guy is really project or not? <laughs> yes, he did. He just didn't want to excited to tell you about your passion for your engineering, your passion for life is going to matter. It's going to get your job. It's going to keep you excited about getting out of bed. It's tricky, you know, you've got to be in the office early, but that office is out over the ocean or whatever. You need to have pride in your ability. Passion for the work that you're trying to do because it's going to make it good. It's going to ensure you deliver quality because of where it goes, and you need professionalism. And yeah, what's that actually mean? Some of you have perhaps exhibited that you don't fully understand where that goes. Being a professional engineer, um, I have a little thing that came out of one of the sort of books that we used for first years about what it means. And there was a degree and a statement of faith and an obligation to the ritual of the calling. These are really ancient sorts of bits and pieces. For those of you that might want to look at ancient words and think, hmm, where does it actually go? I've got a copy there, or I can email you a copy. But these start to do things, and in one of those in the creed, it says, as a professional engineer, I dedicate my professional knowledge and skill to the advancement and betterment of human welfare. It's not about doing fancy things, it's about helping people. I pledge to give my best, the utmost of my performance, that's a challenge, to participate in none but honest enterprise. To live and work according to the laws of man and the highest standards of professional conduct. To place service before profit. Honour and standing of the profession before personal advantage. And the public welfare above all other considerations. They're kind of old fashioned, oh, you know. But that's one suggestion about what you're committing to as a professional as you're moving forward. And I guess in sharing some fatherly advice, I, in that sense, my last chance to, or well, I've spoken some pieces, learn from yesterday, live for today. To either live in the past or live in the future. Live for now. Understand where it is. Hope for tomorrow. Don't stop the question. Keep thinking about why is it so? Where does it go? What does it do? Same at the top there says 2.4 billion people lack clean water. I'm not all for engineering. We don't have enough people here who are. But if you want a job and you want to know how you can change the world, there's your challenge. 
Civil engineering has a real role to play to provide clean water. But there's lots of other opportunities. Take up the challenge. Think about how your work is going to contribute and how it's going to make the world a better place for people. It's the community that you live in. It might be a village. One of our graduates sent us back to Fado to move to Fairport, working with a local village in time and creating irrigation channels. And he was going to the water. Others of you are going to be building high rise, cable trade, or whatever. One of my sons is sitting on the ocean outside Hong Kong, building a road from Hong Kong to the mainland. He's at back in front of said, This is my office. It's a chunk of concrete sticking up out of the ocean. All of it is aimed at people and making the place a better world. If you've learned anything from your time at Burton, I hope you can take those skills with you. You can use them wisely and you seek to make a difference for the people around you as you move forward. I'm glad that I've had an opportunity to influence some of that. With you as a group, I've had probably less contact than in previous years, but if in any small way I've been able to nudge you in this direction, um, then that would be great. I'm sure the department as a whole has had an influence. You're at a stepping point in your life, in your career, I wish you well on that stepping point. Stay in touch and share the skills and the knowledge that you have. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, I have one very, very important role in the proceedings, and that's to say thank you. But before I get there, what I'd like to do is thank you because society really respects civil engineers, really respect engineers. Why is that? Because of what you've done over the last two days. What have you done? You've identified a problem, the problem. You've clarified and specified the need. You've identified innovative potential solutions and you've recommended the best solution based on empirical evidence. That's what you've done. That's what society respects you for doing. So I'd like to thank you for your participation. But what I'd like to do too is repeat what Dr. Ian Chandler said, and that's never be too proud or never be too embarrassed to ask the tradesmen on site. Because the tradesman on site is doing one specific task and he's probably forgotten more than we know. So never be afraid to get advice from that gentleman or lady on site. Now what I'd like to do now is move to the most important thing that I'm required to do in these proceedings. And that's to say thank you again. Now I'd like to say thank you Diane from Diane Garth, which is absolutely splendid and wonderful. I'd like to say thank you to Professor David Scott, who pretended to retire, <laughs> but thankfully <laughs> hasn't done so. And I'd like to say thank you to Miss Kerry Bland, who again has been steady and always here. But what I'd really like to do is say thank you to Dr. Ian Chandler, because Dr. Ian Chandler, for almost three decades, has been the prime mover and the reason why Curtin Civil Engineering has such a huge, high reputation in this area and beyond. Dr. Ian Chandler, for almost three decades, has been influencing students, has been influencing staff, has been influencing the industry, has been influencing more people than you'd care to mention. Dr. Ian Chandler for three decades has been the prime mover for civil engineering in Perth and in the university. And what you have to do, you have to represent the three decades of students that have gone through Dr. Ian Chandler today. 
you have to be there, channel their energy. Three decades of students, you have to channel their energy. And I ask you to thank Dr. Ian Chandler for his contribution to civil engineering and his contribution to civil engineering will continue. We hope that he won't retire, but we're going to bring him back. I want you to join me in the traditional way and represent the three decades of civil engineering students who have gone past him. So, ladies and gentlemen, I give you Dr. Ian Chandler. Yeah, for you to be able to 